Hi, in this episode I'll demonstrate how I created this AI generated background with depth information and used it in Unity. I'll also point you to the source code that's available on GitHub. What I'm doing here is nothing new, but I haven't seen any available implementation for Unity, so I thought I'd share mine. The idea is to use a picture and generate a depth map from that picture, in this case using an AI model called DPT Large, a model that was trained on 1.4 million images for monocular depth estimation. Regarding monocular, this is what AI thinks a monocle looks like. Looks more like a stethoscope for the face. In my case, I generate the pictures using an AI as well, but you could use photos just as well. I created the picture using Stable Diffusion in Automatic 11.11, free open source software for creating AI images. Here I'm trying to create a picture of a tower that I like. Also in Automatic 11.11, I created the depth map using an extension called Depth Map to Mask. More on that later. Next, I wrote some software that simply takes the depth map and generates a mesh. It uses the X and Y of the picture as the X and Y of the mesh and the depth map as the set, of course scaled to give an acceptable result. This technique has severe limitations, particularly you can only look at the background fairly straight on, otherwise you find distortions as can be seen in these demonstrations. There may be ways around these limitations and we will look at some of these later in the video. Here's a, a render of a number of spaceships created using this technique. They seem to be flying over a, a landscape, <laughs> which is unusual. And here's a, a monster I created, a, a Balrog monster in a forest. It's got a strange glow to him. If you look at his leg, you can tell that something's gone wrong with the, with the depth map there. Here's some kind of floating balloon forest, I think. For this sequence, I had some issues with the two characters in the foreground. To solve this, I tried to separate the foreground from the background by using inpainting in Automatic 11.11. So I deleted the entire foreground, including the characters, and generated a new background image. Here you can see I've masked out everything that I don't want to keep. I'm turning off the depth map generation because that's not what we're doing right now. And typically you want the same search terms that you used to, uh, the same prompt you used to generate the image. So I'm extracting that from the image, pasting it. And I click generate. On the first background, it suggests contains two hands instead of the two <laughs> characters, which looks really weird. And we try again. We adjust a couple of values to see if that helps. Not really. That one almost looks good enough, and this time I'm, I'm generating the depth map. This isn't the actual run when I did this, so I'm accepting the, the less than perfect res, uh, result. I did this again as a demonstration. First the background is generated, and then we have our depth map. So, back in Unity, here we can see the... Um, the full mesh of the old 
depth map and here I'm trying to reduce it to make it look better. And unfortunately there's no position where the edges of the of the characters look good. There's no cutoff that make them look smooth and nice and I don't know how to fix this. And the reason this happens is that the uh, the value changes fairly quickly but not quickly enough from being in the foreground to being in the deep background. So they all have, all the edges have spiky triangles sticking out. There's no is there a clean point where all of the characters are in view and none of the background. So I had to compromise. I think this would work better with other pictures. And this is the new background with a new depth map. And here I am composing the uh, the characters from the old image with the background from the new image. And since they're generated the same way, they match in quality. I was never able to find a level where, where the head of the right character was included without too much of the uh, the other artifacts being included as well. So I think the the parallax effect is coming through, but there are certainly some defects to work with. This is Matthias from the future. I couldn't leave it alone. So this is another version where I added some filtering to the depth map before we generate the mesh. It possibly looks <laughs> slightly better. I don't know. Better depth maps would certainly help. Next we have this dystopian landscape with some interesting fires in the background. The closer you are to the landscape, the more the artifacts show through if you look at the left side. I tried recording this sequence again from farther away, more zoomed in, which reduces the parallax. This is the footage I'm talking about, but it still seems to work. Next I wanted to work with a more uh, animated background, inspired by Ava and Earl. It seems to work, slightly at least. These are some uh, <laughs> tiny Darth Vader minions. I will kill you without a tray. I do not need a tray to kill you. Here are some interior shots that I I played around with. Notice that the movement is quite large, which shows the artifacts. The more centered you are and the less you move, the less the artifacts will show through. In the default automatic 11.11 install, the script we need to generate the depth mask uh, isn't available, so you have to install it. And to do that, you go to the extensions tab and you go to the available tab, you click load from, and then you search in this list until you find the map, the, the extension called depth map to mask. Since I've already installed it, it's not available here for me. But you find it and you click install. And once you click install, you go to installed and you click apply and restart UI. And once you've done that, if you go to image to image, it should be available in the script download. And now I'll try to demonstrate the entire process from start to finish. If you have a picture that was generated by Automatic 11.11, you can drop it into the PNG info and get the search terms, the, um, the prompt that was used to generate the image. It's a good way to remember the prompt you, you used. Here I generate an image that I deem sufficiently good to work with uh, for this demonstration. Unfortunately, there are some issues on the left side where you can see the two buildings blend together. There's no space between them. This will, this will come back to haunt me. Once the image has been selected, we need to generate the depth map and we do that in image to image. So we click send to image to image and we select the depth aware image to image mask script that we installed earlier. And uh, we make sure to check the save depth map button. 
and then we hit generate. And there we have the depth map. We need to verify that the depth map looks sane, and it does, so we continue. Next, I upscale the image. I don't need to upscale the image before I generate the depth map that causes issues, but I can generate the depth map. And if I like the depth map, if that looks okay, then I can upscale the image to avoid pixelation when I'm rendering it in Unity. So I'm upscaling it from 1024 by 512 to 2048 by 1024. The first upscaler I used was really fast, and this one is extremely slow. It takes more than a minute to upscale the image, but the quality is much better. The first upscaler generated on the brick wall on the right side, it generated some kind of weird planking instead of bricks. But this upscaler, which is extremely slow, uh, stuck with the, with the bricks, which was certainly what I wanted. See, there's there are bricks in the original. That's the original image. The upscaling isn't done yet. Now for you, I've sped this up, but I had to sit through it in real life. It was <laughs> traumatic. And there we have it. The image is done. Zooming in. Still, still bricks. And that's the image generated. Next we go to Unity. I start by creating a folder to house the project. And I find the, uh, the background image and the depth map. Unfortunately, they're stored in different folders and I drop them into the project. The depth map has to have its read-write flag set in the import settings. Otherwise, my script can't read the, the pixels. Next, I create a uh, game object to hold the new mesh that I'm creating. And then I'm, I'm resetting the transform so it's located in the center at Origo. Origo. Then I create a sphere. A sphere isn't really needed. I just need the mesh renderer and the, the mesh filter. But this is an easy way to create them. I remove the sphere collider because I don't need that. And I add my script called depth map background. And I drop in the depth map that I generated earlier and I generate the mesh. Next I create a material and it has to be an unlit material and I found issues when I tried to use the universal pipeline unlit so I used the old school unlit and I dropped my image into the texture. And you can see it looks warped. There's only certain angles you can view it from without it looking crazy warped and that isn't one of the angles. I mentioned the haunting that was going to come because the two buildings on the left side uh, intersect and you will, yeah, it's gonna be bad. Here I'm trying to align a virtual camera with a position that looks good on the, on the mesh. You can see the parallax is working. The reason I'm placing a camera is that I'm gonna make one of the camera slides that I've been using to create the renders. First camera position down, I create a new camera and I move that camera to a new position. I lift it a bit and I tilt it down. So uh, next I create a timeline and drop it onto the house corner game object. I lock it so I don't have to keep selecting it. I drop in the main camera as a cinema machine brain. The main camera contain, contains a component called the Cinemachine Brain. And I drop in the two virtual cameras. I'll leave a link in the description on how to create these renders. Here I'm checking out how the camera slide is looking and it's not looking great because the house is being distorted on the left side. I decide to record it anyway and I uh, Drop in a recorder track, set the codec to, no, set the output resolution to 1080p and I render it out. And you render these by just pressing play. And more than once I've forgotten to unpress play and I've made changes, <laughs> large changes that are discarded once you realize that you're in play mode and hit pause and everything is destroyed. That's the first render and this is what that looked like. 
I then tried to modify the settings for the mesh that I generated, increasing the resolution of the mesh and also modify how I filter or blur the mesh, what blur range to use and how many iterations. And it becomes very obvious that there are problems where the two buildings are never separated and there's no way around that. I could have fixed it in, in some kind of 2D software, edited the image, might have solved the problem. I'm leaving this in so you can avoid the, <laughs> the same problem if you ever try this. Again, I render it out. And this is what it looked like. That's it for this episode. I hope you found something you liked. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and thanks for watching.